Peter Wishart was an eminent British composer to whom Jack Dawes owes, well, everything really. This year, 2021, is the centenary of his birth. Peter was married to Jack Dawes' founder, Maureen, and they lived together at the end of the lane just here in Bridge House. In 1984, uh, Peter sadly died at the age of 63, and Maureen was heartbroken. Wishing to commemorate Peter and their shared passion for music, she set up the Great Elm Festival in 1987, and from there, Jack Dawes eventually grew, becoming formally constituted um, in 1993. Every year, through the Maureen Lahan Vocal Awards, we note Peter's contribution to the classical repertoire and combine remembering him and his work, a required element in the competition, with commemorating Maureen and celebrating her extraordinary determination in setting up Jack Dawes, where the highest quality classical music could, should, and always will be available to all, not just to listen to, but to actively take part in. The Partita of 1950 is what one might loosely call a homage to the 18th century form, albeit with an incongruous burlesque movement, uh, which really struts its stuff with amusing consequences nestled either side of two lyrically crafted movements, which are a prelude um, and an aria. I've chosen to play these two movements uh, simply because they're so beautifully written and typical, I've come to know, of Wisher style. Now, in each case, there are quite exquisite passages that, without much warning, seem to morph into music that is conspicuously more disturbed or um, less settled. The fourth and final movement of the partita is a capriccio. Here also, we start with a simple tune, uh, sparsely accompanied, as is so often the case in Wishart's calmer writing, before charging off enterprisingly into a vivace central section that becomes increasingly um, excitable culminating in a volatile climax on brilliant trills in both hands. Now, Wishart's personality, not that I ever met him, other than via his music, appears to be captured well in the final couple of pages of this excellent piece. Use of the entire piano register, 
um, unannounced changes of mood and dynamics, gorgeous melodic lines, and just for the heck of it, a daringly dissonant final cadence in F-sharp major, complete with E-sharp as if by mistake, um, but which ties up the entire piece in a fabulously effective, ingenious way.
Mary was his queen. He gave her a snowdrop on a stalk of green. Then all for his kindness and all for his care, she gave him a new laid egg in the garden there. Love, can you see? I cannot see. Oh, tell a tale, not one I know. Then let us play at queen and king. I stone the garden pass we go. Composed in 1959 for his pianist friend Alexander Kelly, Peter Wishart's Ophis Clymaces, or Snakes and Ladders, is a rather substantial six-movement work for solo piano. The work was first brought to my attention uh, by the indefatigable singer Maureen Lahan Wishart, whom I was fortunate enough to get to know from Jack Dole's earliest days. Maureen really was a tremendous advocate, not just for Peter's music, but for the arts in general. At first, all I had to work from when taking a closer look at the piece uh, was a rather inscrutable bundle of incomplete photocopied autograph manuscripts. Um, and whilst uh, Wishart's hand was excellent, uh, there tended to be Alex Kelly's annotations all over the place. Um, and what were the inevitable chopped off ends of lines and pages copied at random angles? Uh, the business of assembling the edition, which I completed in 2006, was made all the trickier. Nonetheless, it was most rewarding to hear Maureen's enthusiastic response, both to the publication of my edition, first by Mycenas and subsequently by Edition Peters, um, and also by my recording. Ophice is a highly contrapuntal work, but at the same time replete with cross rhythms and neoclassical trademarks uh, and wonderful quirky harmonies. A whole lot of uh, bittersweet features, um, false relations, brazen dissonances and so on. Pianistically, there are many challenges here, uh, and pianists with a small stretch will quickly be looking for workarounds, as each of the movements has many ninths and uh, tenths to, to cope with, usually in the left hand. Rarely is there time within the musical flow uh, to break these up. Often what appears obvious at a first busk through turns out to be rather less clear-cut. Wishart shied away from the obvious, scattering unexpected clashes or rhythmic conundrums along the musical path, sometimes, I'd suggest, for amusement as much as anything else. Now, the opening movement provides material that gets used in the subsequent movements, albeit under very uh, clever camouflage, um, and the interval of a falling ninth pervades, yet the movement overall is, as Alex Kelly described, uh, flowing and lyrical, uh, rather than angst-ridden or tetchy. What starts off as something akin to an Alberti bass in the left hand soon takes on a rather different hue, with grittier elements creeping into the accompaniment um, just as the listener gets uh, going into the music. The fifth movement of Ophice is a rather elegiac, slow burn of a movement. Now, in places, the music becomes dark and brooding or else restless and more intense, with muddy left-hand notes that only really make musical sense when the balancing and voicing between the hands are exactly as they need to be. And yet, elsewhere, the music is so appealingly song-like and charming, with floating arpeggio flourishes and some wonderfully poetic moments too. Typically, though, Wishart can't resist cocking a snoop right at the end, trading a conventional cadence for something rather acerbic and yet, at the same time, strangely satisfying.
Jackdaws is a small charity and depends on help from our many friends and supporters in order to deliver our important work. Please consider helping us to deliver our mission of enabling creativity by bringing music to life.